Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make some calcium carbide. For this you will need 1.4 grams of activated carbon and 2.3 grams of calcium. Let's first take a look at what calcium metal actually looks like. Because calcium is air and moisture sensitive, I have it stored in this big paint can and in vacuum packages which I purged with argon before sealing them. It's impossible to see on the video, but the chunks of calcium which I got are extremely big. But because surface area is important for today's experiment, I am going to use this calcium metal which is fine like a powder. If you look closely, you can see that this calcium has oxidized a fair bit, but it will still work. We are making calcium carbide only for the sake of exploring the process. Buying calcium carbide is way cheaper. It's in fact so cheap that, even as a home chemist, you tend to buy it in bulk. Commercial calcium carbide looks like those rocks and it has a distinctive smell. It smells garlic-like, but the odor comes from contaminations, which produce phosphine upon contact with water. For our own safety, gloves and safety goggles will be worn. The calcium metal was transferred to a test tube standing in a beaker and on a scale. Based on the amount of calcium metal used, I calculated how much carbon we are going to need. It turned out that we need 1.4 grams of carbon and therefore we weighed out 1.4 grams of activated charcoal. We added the carbon on top of the calcium and afterwards shook the test tube to mix the ingredients well. In the end, we were left with this black greyish mass. The test tube was clamped in place and we lit up a Bunsen burner. For approximately 10 minutes, we heated up the test tube. In person, the flame, which appears orange on the video, was actually yellow from sodium ions from the glass. The reaction taking place can be seen here. The calcium reacts with carbon to form calcium carbide. If I managed to put the calcium at the bottom and melted it first, a violent reaction would have been visible. But we still made enough calcium carbide to make some acetylene, which you are going to see in a few seconds. The calcium carbide was added to soap water. It is still contaminated with some calcium metal, which will produce hydrogen. The bubbles you see here should still mostly contain acetylene and just some hydrogen. When lighted using a Bunsen burner, you can see the bright yellow flame, which is characteristic of acetylene. If this was only hydrogen, you wouldn't have ended up with such a flame. Anyways, if you liked today's video, make sure to drop me a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you don't want to miss out on awesome chemistry content in the future. At the moment, I'm still working on making lead acetate and on finishing the TCPO preparation. Besides that, there are some other projects. I wish all of you a nice day. Until next time. Bye.